Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to count this thing with one or multiple conditions. Counting the total distinct numbers with defined business rules may seem simple to do in SQL, but not in Google Data Studio until I discovered this method where I use a combination of two formulas to achieve this easily. In this video, I'll share with you the solution where I use count distinct and conditional formula like if or case when to calculate distinct field values as a metric. For example, I have a sales data set with multiple fields like transaction ID, product name, product category, customer name, and so on. If I need to calculate the total of stationary orders, we will need to calculate the total number of orders and filter it to the condition where the product category equals stationary. In this case, we actually have two solutions. One is by using a scorecard and then we create a filter to filter out to only stationary. The second method is to use the calculator field, which is my solution in this tutorial. However, I'll just quickly show you um, what are the steps if you were to do it using the first method. So first of all, you can go to add a chart and then select a scorecard and just click on the canvas. In this case, I'm going to take transaction ID and put it under metric. So you can see now it's showing as CTD, meaning that it's counting distinct number of transaction ID. Now we know that in total, we have 19 orders. Come to this add a filter over here and I'm just going to hit this create a filter. Let's name the filter as filter to stationary orders only. So I'm going to include category equals to stationary only. And Click save. So now I have filtered it to stationary only and I can just rename it as total stationary. If we click view and we click stationary, we can see that we have only six orders. So we can validate that this calculator field is Sorry, this metric is calculated correctly. But sometimes we may want to calculate it within a calculated field so that we can do some calculations such as um, percentage of sales using that field. Before I give you the right formula, I'm sure some of you have used the same combination of formulas that I've mentioned, which is um, by using the case when or if conditional formula with the count distinct formula. If you have used that, but you are getting the error message like can't mix metrics and dimensions, I'm thinking we can take some time to analyze why this formula is wrong. There is an Italian proverb saying that give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish and you'll feed him for his lifetime. So I hope that you not only come here to grab a formula and go, but instead learn how to debug your formulas and hopefully apply it to other areas. Let's look at this formula that I have used. I'm saying that if the category is stationary, we want to count the distinct number of transaction ID or else I'm going to return zero. The logic seems correct but it has actually violated a rule in Data Studio where metrics and dimensions cannot coexist in the same formula. But you would probably argue that you didn't use any aggregated field. In fact, yes, we only use two dimensions field, category and transaction ID. And we can actually further confirm this as the fields are colored in green. In case you are not aware of this, fields highlighted in green color represent dimension fields, whereas the one highlighted in blue are actually aggregated metrics. So it seems that we did not violate the rule. But if you look closer, we actually included an aggregation function 
which is count distinct. This is what caused the error, because aggregation function will return an aggregated matrix. So Data Studio has detected that there is a mix of aggregated matrix and dimension fields, even though we did not actually use any aggregated matrix explicitly. So my solution here is actually quite simple. We just need to move the formula's arrangement a little bit. In summary, we will move the if clause or case when clause into the count distinct formula. First of all, let me get rid of this. And we will start with if the category is stationary. So now we have defined the rules, which is category equals to stationary. The second step is to define what is the value that you want to return when the condition is true. So in this case, make sure you return the unique identifier as the value. In this case, it's the transaction ID. Next, we want to tell the formula to return the null values when the condition is false. So we'll just type null here. And please don't return zero or any other values because or else you would count one more extra in the total distinct numbers. The last step is actually wrapping the conditional statement with count distinct. It will count those transaction ID that meet the criteria based on the if statement or case st statement. Now let's give this calculated field a name. Let's name it total stationary orders. Okay, and click save and finished. Now we can see there's a new field inside the property panel. Similarly, I'm going to create a scorecard. Maybe I'll just put it here. And I will drag in the total stationary orders over here. And yeah, we got the same count. And this time we don't need to rename the field because when we are naming the calculator field, it will automatically take the name as the metric name. So as mentioned, the advantage of doing this within a calculator field is that you can use it to do other calculation. This can be very useful if you have some important metrics that you want to display as a scorecard without requiring users to interact with the dashboard. So that's all for today. If you are interested to learn about case when formula, I have another video that talks about how I use the formula to label and regroup the product name into their category shown in this dashboard. If you like my tutorials, consider supporting me by liking this video or subscribe to my channel. You may also buy me a coffee if you could afford to support me. Link will be in the description. On a side note, today's video is available as a blog post in my website and I will also publish it to a medium in near future so that we could share this knowledge with wider audience. Do follow me if you're using all these platforms because your support is a great encouragement to me to continue sharing